welcome back. Uh, since uh, last few classes, we have been talking about how e-business has affected uh, um, affected the web based businesses. In fact, how this web based businesses emerged because of in, uh, 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 how new business models developed because of internet and the web. In today's class, we are going to see it is not that new business models have only developed and uh, uh, you know uh, uh, brick and mortar businesses have also uh, evolved their business processes, they have uh, modified their business processes uh, by taking advantage of this internet and the web. So, in this introductory lecture, we will be talking about two such cases, where we will be, we'll be looking at two innovative models that uh, organizations, uh, two different organiza organizations have adopted for taking advantage of internet um, based commerce. The first one that we are going to deal with is e procurement at Tata Steel. When we look at the procurement, procurement is a process which exists in every organization. So, however, today we are going to see how uh, this ICT technology, inter, uh, information and communication technology and specifically this internet based commerce uh, has changed the e procurement process at Tata Steel. This uh, I would like to first acknowledge that this particular case I have adopted from some case study uh, published uh, published in some journal and this case study is actually developed by some professor in XLRI. So, uh, uh, let us first look at the Tata Steel as an organization. Actually, Tata Steel's uh, this particular case study is uh, uh, is uh, made during uh, uh, during 2004-2005 uh, and uh, during that period Tata Steel's contributed over 13 percent of the total steel production in India and the total turnover in fiscal year 2002 and 2003 was 19.6 billion US dollar. The company's profit in the same year was 2.2 billion US dollar. Now, if we look at that uh, as I have already told you procurement process is not new, but what Tata Steel what we are going to discuss today is how Tata Steel has used this information and communication technology and uh, uh, internet based technologies in particular to change its traditional procurement process. So, let us look at the journey of uh, uh, e journey of e procurement uh, Tata Steel for e procurement. So, first of all uh, during 1999 and 2000 it made uh, it automated the bill payment uh, services, then uh, auto indented uh, for fast and medium moving items, then it also did electronic routing and approval. Then it also made a decision support system for the store. In 2000 and 2001, uh, when it started implementing its ERP, what it did? It did uh, it uh, searched for various uh, strategic solutions for e procurement uh, for adopting e procurement. So at the, this time, it uh, developed uh, this e procurement solutions along with its traditional process. Uh, in 2001 and 2002, uh, it implemented the SAP material management module and uh, uh, during this process, it also linked this its e procurement with that of SAP and it also adopted reverse auction. In fact, uh, today we are simply going to look at how this particular uh, uh, journey of Tata Steel has, has uh, improved its, its e procurement process. But the details about this e procurement step, etcetera, we will be looking in some subsequent lecture. Now, uh, uh, during 2002 and 2003, it actually it not only uh, I mean previously developed this e procurement site and all, then it uh, what it did, it actually used this site and it uh, made uh, trained its suppliers uh, for using this particular service. My now by this uh, if you look at this adoption of e procurement solution by its suppliers if you look at this graph actually uh, uh, actually its uh, number of uh, its e procurement partners grew slowly over the year and uh, if you look at that uh, uh, the number of vendors using site it also increased and the total number of vendor uh, and because of this increase the total number of vendors who were not using the site and would, who were using the site of course, it remains constant. 
So, now uh, it adopted a number of different e procurement solutions. What it did? Uh, in fact, we have already discussed about metal junction uh, in the context of a service provider and we also uh, discussed at that point of time that, uh, that metal junction is a website which provides this uh, procurement uh, and selling services using auctions to many of the uh, steel companies. In fact, it started this metal junction started its journey with uh, Tata Steel's um, along with Tata Steel. So, this metal junction is an e marketplace for, for steel industry sponsored by a consortium of Cell and Tata Steel and uh, it is one of the uh, one of the approach for procurement solution for Tata Steel. Then Tata Steel also had one internal e bidding solution, it also had one e negotiation solution and it also had one online stock information system for vendor managed inventory uh, VMI suppliers. In fact, about this vendor managed inventory where the vendor is takes care of the inventory of the manufacturer we are going to discuss little late. Um, if you look at the information flow um, of Tata Steel with that of the metal junction, we can see that this metal junction which uh, takes uh, partially takes care of the um, of the procurement of Tata Steel, not the strategic products, but uh, um, remaining products. What happens? This uh, Tata Steel, uh, in fact, Metal Junction has one of its um, uh, one of its office in the Tata Steel's uh, premises. Uh, what what happens? It takes uh, here we are actually representing three types of flows. This dotted line is uh, inventory and finance flow and this uh, um, thin line is information flow and this double line is actually credit flow. So, here we see that in this particular model uh, three um, I mean the many parties are involved the Tata Steel itself, then Metal Junction, then the partner bank and the sellers and buyers. In fact, uh, uh, this uh, Metal Junction takes care of both selling and buying part of Tata Steel, but right now what we are focusing at is the buying phenomena. So, therefore, what uh, concern to us is Tata Steel is the buyer and there are multiple sellers. So, in fact, Metal Junction provides a facility for Tata Steel for hosting its um, uh, hosting its requirement, so that the sellers can respond over the web. And when the sellers respond over the web, um, the transactions take place and basically they use reverse auction for uh, conducting these transactions. And at the end of the transaction, your uh, the inventories are actually um, uh, sent from uh, the seller to the Tata Steel and the credit flows uh, to the bank. Uh, the second, uh, as I told you, Tata Steel has uh, various options for uh, options for uh, procurement. One was through Metal Junction, and another one was through its own e procurement system. This as uh, I have already told you this e procurement system was uh, uh, developed indigenously by Tata Steel and that point of time when it was implementing SAP parallelly it was getting developed and uh, during that time SAP was not providing a solution e, e procurement uh, solution directly to its uh, 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 directly to the company where it was getting implemented. So, what they did? they in between two SAP modules, they implemented their own e procurement system. So, what was happening on the SAP, the purchase requirements were raised by the purchase department and the request for quotations were raised. Then through the e procurement portal, the suppliers were asked to, uh, I mean it was sent to the suppliers and the suppliers were asked to submit the quotations and they were submitting the quotations through, uh, through this e procurement uh, portal and then the opening of the quotation was taking place. Then after the quotations were opened, it was again transferred to another module of SAP. So, uh, SAP is basically the ERP system which they were using. And so, uh, um, then it was getting tabulated by the SAP and the order placement and delivery was taking place and good receipt note was uh, made and it was sent to the supplier and payment information was sent to the supplier. So, the basically what I am trying to tell is uh, because of this internet, this Tata Steel could actually make its own e procurement portal and it, it uh, started using it along with the SAP. 
SAP that is its uh, ERP solution. So, if you look at the portfolio of e procurement solutions, e procurement solutions taking care of uh, looking at the buy volume and the critical and the criticality uh, critical to cost uh, or quality ratio um, of the item. So, if when the buy volume is low and the item is not very critical, they were actually using this business process outsourcing. So, uh, again when the buy volume was high and the criticality item was low, they were going for reverse auction. And when the buy volume was low and criticality and to cost and quality was very high, they were using metal junction. And uh, when both of these were high and this, this was basically for, uh, for the items, um, for the um, for the strategic items, they were actually using this E negotiation. Now, let us look at the benefits that Tata Steel obtained through E procurement. So, uh, looking at this benefits, if we can see their lead time actually decreased over the time. In fact, if we take it as uh, uh, as uh, let us say um, uh, around uh, 99 percent in the beginning, it, uh, it was actually decreased to 20, 20 percent. Then their strategic outsourcing saving also increased over the year and the increase was quite uh, notable. It started with a very uh, low amount around uh, let us say uh, some less than 50 crores and it increased up to uh, it, it increased up to more than 350 crores. And there was a, a reduction in the inventory cost as well where the cost uh, over the year from starting from 2002-3 it consistently reduced in uh, till 2004 and 5. The second case that we are going to learn is actually ITC's, ITC's e chopal. This uh, uh, in fact this e chopal you cannot say this is uh, there is any kind of business model involved in this, but this is a very innovative uh, this is a very innovative uh, approach where uh, where actually uh, um, ITC used internet for getting more business for getting more business. In fact, this initiative was implemented by ITC uh, under the leadership of uh, chief executive S. Shiv Kumar. It began with the aim of deploying technology for re-engineering procurement of soybean and its derivatives um, such that it serves as a high quality profitable distribution and marketing channel. Now, look at this each Opal model. This ITC supplied a computer kit to each village with the this the following component a PC with a window or Intel platform, multimedia kit and connectivity interface. It also had this connection lines uh, uh, it also provided connection lines uh, either uh, with uh, through telephone or uh, through VSAT and they also provided this power supply consisting of a U U UPS and the solar powered battery backup and a dot matrix printer. This total setup cost for ITC was, um, was um, around um, 1,70,000 per chopal and another 1 lakh was spent on people, travel, communication, software and training. The farmers were able to access the world wide web through a website dedicated specifically for them and this website is www.soyachopal.com. This company believed it would be able to recover the cost and make profit within 3 years from the initial rollout. Actually, this particular website was updated uh, by this ITC's Bhopal office and this data um, uplink that provided the source uh, in, uh, information to the site uh, was uh, made done there. However, it took place in Bangalore, the home of ITC Infotech uh, India Limited. This site contains uh, a 
a number of useful information that was previously unavailable to the farmers in Madhya Pradesh. In fact, this Ethiopal was there. In fact, right now uh, they have uh, replicated this model in many parts of the country, but it initially started in Madhya Pradesh. And uh, um, as uh, as I told you, uh, in various places they had their Chopal uh, with uh, some cost uh, implemented. Then what exactly they were showing in that portal, that e Chopal portal. They were showing weather information, farming practices, market information and uh, that this market in information included the domestic market price, international market price of selected competing countries, global trends in, term, in terms of uh, commentary by experts. And uh, it was there was also one ag agri input section, and this section gave them the details of India's best agri input and uh, manufacturers and vendors. They also provided various alerts. Uh, the purpose of this was to um, or was to provide the farmers with region specific um, uh, specific uh, alerts. Then there was uh, soil and water testing um, um, details. This section uh, explains the farmers about the significance of soil and water testing and, and also the various ways to collect the samples and so on. They were also providing the news and, uh, and the purpose was to provide the farmers with the information on the latest happening in the agri uh, industry. Then uh, this kiosk that was implemented in various plot, there was various uh, uh, guidelines for that. First of all for kiosk establishment. There was a mapping of internet uh, supportive telephone exchanges and, uh, select and they, they, were th they went through this selection of agri active villages were uh, done. Then identification of the progressive farmers with a leadership skill in the selected villa villages uh, was made and, uh, um, and uh, they were actually leading this kiosk. And kiosk infrastructure we have already talked. It was PC, UPS, were dot matrix printer, telephone or internet, telephone and internet connectivity uh, and so on. And then this Pratinidhis, Pratinidhis, uh, this uh, the leaders were called actually the Pratinidhis. This uh, Pratinidhis um, were leading a group of 10 to 15 farmers in the villages, um, uh, villages who were trained in the PC operations and the portal use, uh, the portals use through trained computer operators. Now what happened, uh, what they were uh, targeting at, see look at this, they were actually not uh, um, directly asking the farmers to sell their produce to ITC. What they were doing is that they were inducing, um, uh, inducing a mechanism through which they can actually get the support of the farmers and ultimately get their produce if the farmers like, but they were not forcing them, but they were providing them with so many uh, uh, this kiosk facility with so much information that the, uh, the farmers were becoming aware of the actual market, so that they cannot be exploited by the, by the um, uh, third parties who, who buy the items, buy the produce, buy the soybeans from the farmers at a very low price and sell it at a very high price in the other market. So, uh, uh, so in the in the um, um, traditional market, uh, in the traditional market, what happens? The either the the farmers used to uh, take their produce to the uh, market yard, and uh, and from the market yard they were uh, sent to these exporters, and they these exporters and processors used to take them. So their uh, current procurement system was like this, first the farmer will be bagging, then the farmer will be transporting the items to the mandi, then uh, the, in the mandi it will be displayed and inspected and there will be auction and uh, uh, weighing of the items, then payments will be the made to the farmers and they, the items will be transported to the processor. Now the problem was, the problem with the existing mandi system was the lack of professional competition combined with uh, communal stakeholders on rural trading. The, um, then agents forward loans to the farmers during sowing season and the farmers were obliged to sell their produce to these agents and uh, in the process 
the the this uh, the loan which was uh, rendered to the farmers were getting deducted by the agents um, at the time of selling then the uh, dependence on the agents for the information regarding the price was happening and they, they these agents were actually manipulating prices and information there was no source to analyze or exploit the price trend uh, uh, or um, uh, or uh, selling the items at optimal price then the weight used for weighing process were tampered with then the crops were displayed in the open in the look now the uh, farmer was actually carrying crops to the crop yard and it was getting displayed over there and uh, um, and it was being subjected uh, to various uh, weather conditions and it was getting destroyed now inspe in inspection process was also process was also not very scientific and it was arbitrary and it was done in a manner so, so that it was actually favoring the buyers and there was no incentive to the farmers for uh, um, to invest in better seeding in and farming practice uh, better seeding or farming practices that lead to higher quality um, even though this quality mattered a lot to the processors then at multiple points of handling in the supply chain requires the produce to be bagged which takes 4 to 5 times longer to be unloaded at the processing plant and then unbagged at the produce these traders generally do not have the capacity to store and manage the uh, different quality and uh, grades of produce and this inhib uh, and thus inhibiting efforts to produce better crop grades so uh, so what happened now uh, the situation with the introduction of of this ichopal this particular traditional way of taking it to the market yard and showing it through this uh, agents uh, who were called the pakka aditya and kacha aditya those agents and sending it to the processor through the agents now got replaced through the web based uh, system web based uh, information procurement system now in case of uh, um, uh, uh, procurement uh, through ichopal so as i told you they were not forcing the farmers but looking at the price trend etc and the prices to be offered by itc the farmer can come forward for selling and what uh, what they were getting they were getting this pricing in information and they were getting facilities for inbound logistics this inspection and grading was done by itc and it was done in a proper manner then weighing and procurement uh, weighing and payment was made immediately and this hub logistics was also managed by the uh, uh, by itc now if you look at the benefit of cost analysis of the current and proposed system we can see that in the existing supply chain uh, uh, looking at various uh, components the total cost was um, at that point of time was around 1920 and uh, um, uh, that was to for bringing it to the market yard and then for the transaction cost from market yard market yard to the processor considering various components such as uh, commissioning labor charges and so on it was total 5750 so the total money has uh, has now reduced in case of this proposed e procurement system where the farmer was not incurring the other costs it was only incurring this baggaging and transportation uh, this uh, trans and uh, uh, this cost which was actually reduced to rupees 40 so if you go back it was from 1920 it got reduced to 40 per metric ton and uh, uh, similarly here the the um, uh, some of the cost also got reduced and the processors the transaction cost also got reduced and earlier it was 5750 and, uh, and uh, it got reduced to some uh, 3000 Uh, and 300 and the farmers gain was significant there was significant savings in the transaction cost and higher price realization it was almost 2.5% higher or uh, or in terms of dollar it was 6 dollar per ton uh, similarly the new setup offers uh, a more consistent and efficient information system to the farmers and there was a daily access to the price at several nearby mondays 
this makes the critical decision when and where to sell the crop. Uh, I, again I remind you they were actually not forcing the farmer to sell, but they were offering a price in comparison with the um, prices available uh, elsewhere, so that the farmers were, uh, were inclined to sell their products. Then the transaction at the hub was also faster than that of the mandi, usually it was not taking more than 2 or uh, 3 hours. This electronic weighing scales were accurate and uh, were not susceptible to, um, uh, to any kind of manipulation. Uh, there was no need to bag produce or uh, which avoids the associated loss of uh, produce by um, uh, intentional spillage. There was recognition as uh, um, they recognize as not just simply agricultural producers, but they are integral part of um, the integral part business partners in the supply chain process. Um, then farmers can also uh, make use of information available to them through the portals to improve their yield and uh, this seed, fertilizer and consumer product, uh, products offered by them through e-portal uh, substantially actually reduce their cost. And uh, the net result has been seen uh, has been that the while the area under the soya cultivation has increased, the total procurement made at Mondays uh, got decreased. And what was this processor's benefit? The processor no longer need to go through the layer of intermediate. Now, who is the processor here? The processor here is the ITC itself. Earlier what ITC used to do? ITC used to depend on a number of agents, this Kacha and Paka Adityas, they used to uh, depend on them and the farmers used to bring their produce to the uh, market and through the agents it was getting sold. But now processor got a number of benefits, the processor no longer needs to go to the layer of uh, go through a layer of number of intermediaries which re uh, automatically reduces its transaction cost. The current system was little unprofessional and there were uh, corrupt business uh, practices uh, which got reduced and uh, they were and this processor that is ITC got a chance to directly interact with the farmer which was not possible in the present Monday system. And uh, this direct uh, procurement uh, because of this direct see earlier what was happening the farmer was taking the items to the Monday and it was getting exposed and they it was displayed for um, displayed, uh, displayed for the inspection of these um, uh, third parties third parties and what they were doing in the process of it was getting exposed to uh, exposed to various weather conditions and it was getting um, the quality was getting degraded. Now, because of this direct procurement from the farmers, the products quality also was retained and there was let less loss in, in terms of handling and transportation. This enabled the processor to influence the farmers, this process is actually enabled uh, and, uh, uh, what is the process? The process that I am trying to tell is this uh, the process of showing this information through each opal actually influence the farmers to sell their produce to the processor directly by bypassing this third parties. Okay, thank you very much.